Okay, hello, uh, my name is Jack, and I'm going to show you guys a server I built on the 21 Bitcoin computer that allows peer-to-peer -peer wagers to be put on online chess games. So you can put a wager on a chess game against an online opponent that you don't know and have no trust with, um, and you can put that wager, it'll be transacted peer-to-peer -peer, um, with the third, uh, like Oracle third party being a server, and no one will ever be in control of anyone's money, which is pretty cool. Uh, before I get started, though, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not supporting gambling or any type of illegal activity. I built this uh, originally just to prove the concept uh, and show some cool things that Bitcoin can do and that the 21 Bitcoin computer can do. So, that being said, this is my server running on the far left. Uh, this is 20 client at Bitcoin. We'll say it will be black and 20 at Bitcoin computer. Let's say it will be white. So first you get these three files when you're using the server. Um, and in order to create a smart contract in Bitcoin, specifically a multi-sig redeem script, you need to give the script all the public keys that are going to be involved. So we can actually just run Python 3 pub key and it will return us a payout public key that we can use. And so it did that for black. Let's do that for the white player. So we get our two public keys. And the three that will be involved in the script is white's public key, black's public key, and then the server's public key. It's pretty straightforward. So now that we have that, uh, we just need to create a chess game on Lee Chess. So we can simply play with a friend, white, and it creates this game for us. And we need to give the server the game ID so that uh, the server knows which game to check on Lee Chess's API to determine who won. So then once we have all of that data, all we have to do is send a little curl request to the server. So this is what the curl request looks like to the slash new route. It's pretty straightforward. It's a post request, and then this is the data being sent. We're going to need the game ID, black's public key, and white's public key. So we have all of that data. So let's just grab the game ID here and paste it in. And then we want black's public key. So we said 20 client was going to be black. And this interface obviously is not very user friendly. Um, this is super duper MVP, minimal viable product, uh, really bare bones just to prove the concept and get something working. Um, but I am trying to make this a web application and working on it and should be ready soon. So now that we have all the data we need, White's public key, black's public key, and the game ID, we can just hit enter, and the server will create a smart contract for us, a multi-sig redeem script. So here's the actual script, and you can see op2 specifies that two signatures are needed for any funds to be released from this script, right? So no one party can ever take money from the script that's in it. You need two signatures. There's three total public keys, so it's a two of three, and then it's going to check the signatures to make sure your public key corresponds with or your private keys corresponds with the public keys submitted to the script. ID 9 is extremely important because when we ask the server, hey, can you check who won the chess game, create an output and sign it, uh, it needs to know which um, script you're talking about. So we're talking about script 9. Here's the chess game ID and then the script address, lastly, is where we can pay our wager to the script. So let's do that right now. Let's agree to do something like uh, 15,000 Satoshis. We can run this client file, which is pretty cool. Just going to ask us the script address that we're going to pay our wager to and the amount. So let's say 15,000. And then it gives us the deposit hex, <coughs> excuse me, the deposit index and the deposit ID. We need these two because in Bitcoin, to send an output, you need to reference the input. Um, which again, like the user interface for this is not very good. But um, we just need this data to reference the input that we're going to be sending to the winner. And then this, we can actually paste into something like Block Explorer. And it will tell us, uh, it will give us some details on the transaction just to prove that this is a real transaction that was broadcasted to the blockchain and is waiting to be confirmed, right? So now that this was white paid their wager, let's make sure black pays their wager. So let's run this client and let's grab the script address, which is right here, right? 
paste that in, we agreed 15,000 Satoshis. And we can also validate that Black paid, <coughs> excuse me, there are 15,000 Satoshis. Right? Cool. So that's pretty cool. And now um, all we have to do is play the game and ask the server to sign based on who won. So let's keep all this data here. We're going to need it later. And let's play a quick, quick, quick chess game. So I'm going to copy this URL and then paste it in this incognito window. And we'll play. We'll have white win really quickly. So black kind of checkmated themselves. Here we go. Uh, white won the game, simple checkmate, and then let's assume that this is a typical internet scenario where you have no relationship with your opponent or whoever you're sending uh, value to or wagering value with, and they log off or they don't reply or they don't want to sign any script. We can now use the server to create an output to the winner and give us the output, and then once we sign it, the transaction will be broadcasted and go straight to your Bitcoin address. So let me demonstrate that now. It's, again, just another simple curl request, which we can take a look at. So white one. Either opponent can do this, but since white one, we'll have white do it. So first, we'll look at the route. We're sending it to slash sign, and then this is a dynamic route. So we need to put in the ID of the contract, which I referenced up here, so it knows which contract it's going to look up the chess game and send transactions to. So we're going to put in 9, because it was contract number 9. Then the deposit index, which I talked about earlier, is 0. So we'll put in 0. And then we just need to paste in the deposit hex. And I see a little Apple Notes quote and not. That would have given us a little error. Now the deposit hex, the input that we're referencing, um, I'm just going to paste in there. And then we can just hit enter, and it'll make a request to the server, and the server will send us back some really cool stuff. So if you notice, black pub key, winner's pub key, white's pub key, and server's pub key. And the white public key and the winner public key are the exact same. So the server was able to determine who won the chess game, and then it made a payment out to the winner's public key and signed it. So all we need to do if we want those funds to go to our Bitcoin address is provide one more signature, right? Because if I scroll up, the original script said it needed two signatures of the three public keys that are in the script. The server provided the first one. Now we just need to provide uh, one more. So what I can do is I can run the last file, signer. And signer will sign a Bitcoin transaction for us. So the public key that was used to create the script, we were white. This is 20 at Bitcoin computer, so I'll paste that in. Uh, the transaction of the uh, the hex transaction of the output to the winner, paste that in. And then I, this is again like terrible user flow, but uh, because of how split up each step is, um, and that I'm using a command line interface, I need to remind this file um, of all the public keys that were involved in the script. But then voila, it actually signed the transaction for us, provided the two of three signatures, and broadcasted it to the blockchain. So if I go to Block Explorer and I paste in this transaction, this uh, makes a lot of sense, right? Input is not, co not confirmed because the input is these guys, these unconfirmed transactions from before, right? So the input is unconfirmed. Um, which makes total sense, and it sends it back to the winner, which again makes total sense. So this is it only sent over the first uh, wager sent, right? It only I basically got the fifteen thousand satoshis returned back to me and signed off, and now I can, if I want, send the fifteen thousand satoshis that I earned by winning the game. So I can do Python three. Um, signer and then the public key that I used was white the transaction hex which is actually over or oh no sorry I skipped a step I need to run this script one more time right because I need 
the server to sign an out another output to me. So I think it was number nine. Let me just double check that. Yep. The deposit index is let's see this one is one so I can just put that in and then let me copy the deposit hex and let's fix this right here paste in the deposit hex ask the server can you please create an output and sign it it does which is really cool now we can run this little signer um, and I was white Oh, winner or white whatever um, the transaction hex is here and then all of the pub keys involved server white and black and it signs the transaction broadcasts it to the blockchain and we can verify that by pasting it into block explorer input unconfirmed makes sense because these inputs that we sent to the script are still unconfirmed um, so voila there we go so in recap I just played a chess game on the internet and wagered money with no third-party service involved no PayPal I didn't bet through Vegas or anything like that we were able to agree upon any amount we bet 15,000 Satoshis which I think at the current going rate is like five cents maybe um, and we played a chess game for it. No one was ever in control of anyone's money because you need more than one signature. And then in case of any type of dispute, you can ask the server to create an output from the script, sign it for you, and then run a file to sign it yourself and get the funds sent to whoever won the chess game. So hope you thought that was cool. Um, I am at Jack Mallers on Twitter if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, hope that was informative um, and a cool thing. <laughs>